After Buzz fans, I am here at RTX with Gray and Miles. How are you guys doing today? Swell. I am doing fantastic. I'll be at a little horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a long convention. Yeah. Yeah, so this is day three. We've been going marathoning the whole damn thing. Yeah, I've been running from panel to panel and pretty much having the time of my life. Yeah. And it's just like every year RTX just gets better and better. And this... Uh, this is no exception. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Red versus Blue. We're getting to the end of the Chorus Trilogy with season 13, and it has been epic, if I may say so. It's amazing. Is there anything in there that you would redo or that you would add if you had the chance? Uh, for the whole trilogy? Yes. <clears throat> uh, I think if I could actually revisit something, uh, a lot of uh, season 12 and a, a, a good portion of season 13, a lot of those those scripts were the first draft um, just because of how like under the gun we were to try and get these pages out and to get, get the show made. Um, I think if I could, I'd go back and I'd revisit Carolina in season 12. You know, we had this... Um, a bit of a complication where we essentially have a superhero who can do all sorts of crazy superhuman feats and then everybody else no matter how good they are are still just human so it's like how do you deal with something like that so the the initial idea was well let's have uh, to show off Felix's just dirty underhandedness just this really cheap shot to her leg and it worked um, uh, it worked for the narrative but uh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized fans of Carolina must have been pretty bummed. Like, if I was a big fan of Batman and I went to see the Justice League movie and then Batman, like, sprained his ankle, I would have been like, oh, are you serious? <laughs> so I, I wish, like, I do honestly, I, that would be probably the one thing I really wish I could go back and try to address that in a more creative and interesting way to where she wouldn't be as handicapped. And that's what I think I tried to do with Shark Face this season, which is don't necessarily make Carolina weaker, just put her up against that much more formidable of a foe. Uh, and, uh... He was fairly formidable. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of what Miles said, I guess, you know, a, a project will always take as much time as you give it. That is just the way that it goes. So if they gave us a year to develop uh, the Chorus Trilogy, we would have taken a whole year in pre-production. So one way or another, uh, it's always going to fill that time. I think, you know, Miles and the team knocked it out of the park with the time that they had. Um, I actually don't have any regrets about anything. I think everything was so solid over these three years. And I want to just put it out there that I'm, I'm firmly in the camp that I would not go back and, and touch uh, Eleven either. There's a lot of people that, um, you know, I, I love the fact that we went back to the roots of the show and uh, we were just straight up hanging with the Blood Gulch gang and just being able to sort of ground everybody again for as long as we were before the, uh, the trilogy's plot really started to kick into gear. All right. And what are you most proud of in the Chorus trilogy? Oh, that's an amazing question. Um, I would say on, on the storytelling side, it's watching the Blood Gulch gang be forced to uh, kind of grow up and rise to the occasion and actually start to start to take some responsibility for the things that they witness going on around them. And on the production side, it's the way that the crew has uh, grown and coordinated together and just kicked so much butt in the last year or two. Yeah, yeah, the second half is fantastic. Like we have just the greatest team ever and I'm so, so, so grateful that we've been able to work together on this project. Um, so seeing them, all these people from different backgrounds uh, and, and experiences coming together for this one big final push, I thought it was perfect considering that's kind of what's going on in the story right now. And um, I think, yeah, from a story point of view, I don't know. Um, I think there was a lot of moments that I was really, really proud of. Like uh, the, the Felix reveal was a ton of fun. Um, the Reds and Blues beating Locus and Felix in season 12 by doing what they always do, which is standing around and talking, was really fun. Um, but I think, honestly, one of my proudest moments uh, with, with the whole team, too, was, was episode 7 of season 13, because we have this really, really dark and twisted and, and very disturbing scene that we did in Machinima. Like, it, that's always something that I, I, I really proud of our Machinima team is that um, we're able to take video game characters and have them go bap, 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 and we're able to not just do comedy. And, and uh, you know, it's all these really subtle things and camera moves and, and the work that comp and, and audio and music do and when it all comes together. We had something that I think really, really stuck with our audience and uh, was really, really creepy. And it made you care about this merciless stone cold killer, which is like, that's a first, I suppose. Yeah, between that plus, I don't want to get too spoilery, but there's some other really emotionally intense moments uh, later, episode 16, for example, where I mean the bulk of that is machinima and uh, uh, the fact that you get choked up at what's going on on screen when, um, again, in collaborative effort, you know, it's it's the music, it's the sound design, it's the vocal performances, but uh, again, uh, the machinimator team handled that one. I thought they just did an amazing job. 
I mean, I don't think that's spoilers anymore. 16's been out for a yeah, week. Yeah, no, if, if you don't know what happened, I don't, I don't know why you're watching this right now. But yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That, now I'm going to go cry. That no. was, you're, you're absolutely correct. That was incredibly heart-wrenching and very, very well done. So you voice the mercenaries that everyone loves and loves to hate. <laughs> and I know we may still have a few spoilers coming up, especially regarding what Felix is afraid of, because that has been an amazing tease all season. But is there anything about your characters that isn't addressed in this season that you would like the audience to know? Uh, Locus's love of magical girl anime. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really talk about that, that frequently. But. <laughs> yeah, Felix just mocks him every time he brings it up. <laughs> He's like, yo, Sailor Moon. Nice ribbons, bro. <laughs> um, no. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Miles has done some amazing stuff with the writing about Locus's evolution from, uh, you know, for the first year or so of the trilogy, you, you just get the facade. You get the stone cold, stone cold killer. Um, you start to pick up a, a little bit more that there's some depth going on there. There's additional themes that Locus cares about, there's some questions that he's desperately trying to answer in order to sort of understand what path in life should he be walking, and you, they, they start to get into that too, and he's finally going to get some answers, and, and what is he going to do with this information is uh, one of the biggest questions at the end of the, this particular year. Yeah, I think um, what's been fun is, uh, although we haven't outright said anything, um, but it's been fun to watch this... Um, evolution of these two characters in terms of where they began at the beginning of all of this and where they are now in terms of like on on a moral scale you know when we meet Felix he's this lovable asshole and then you know Locus is the big scary bad but then as the trilogy has progressed you start to wonder who's really the worst between the two of them and I think there's a lot of things about Locus and Felix and who they are as people that I would love to explore uh, in some sort of form which uh, you know if we, only we were doing an anthology next yeah, year. If, Apparently, they talked about yeah, it at the yeah, founders panel. That's yeah, great. So yeah, we we can we can say that uh, RVB fourteen is happening. Uh, we don't have a lot of details we can say about it yet, but the plan and plans can change. But um, we're gonna do the like the animatrix of Red versus Blue. It's gonna be Tales from the Red versus Blue universe, and I call it the Red versus Blue universe. The but blue then everybody universe. hates me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone but, says yeah. Blue versus Red. No one says that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, people should let us know um, what they'd be interested in seeing. One of the ideas that we're kicking around is you know, maybe we'll get to see a little bit more of Felix and Lucas in action somehow. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I might be biased, but I really like those guys. You don't say. Well, thank you for doing my segue for me. Game about season 14. Um, what characters would you bring back if you had the chance? Vic. <laughs> uh, Vic. <laughs> I mean, my favorite character is Captain Butch Flowers, but, you know, maybe yeah. we can, maybe we can no, hook up with Ed or I, I think we need to do the, uh, the Alien Chronicles of Junior. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, we need to do... Um, I'm pretty sure people would murder us if we maybe didn't talk about York or anything like that. I mean... This is true. Dead freelancers are still loved. There's that. You know, um, there's, there's the sibling relationship with North and South. And there's there's also just like um, all those all that time spent in the canyon. We've seen the points of view of certain characters, but maybe from the point of view of another character. Um, Lopez. <laughs> I can't talk about that one. <laughs> um, but uh, we already we already have a few ideas of uh, things that we want to do, and I think that's what I'm most excited for with RB season 14 is that we're not going to be tethered to this storyline that's been going on for 13 years, we're just kind of going to take a breather and say, hey, what have we always wanted to do? Which is kind of how we approached the Chorus trilogy, which was, what is something the Reds and Blues have never done, but we've always wanted to see them do? And the answer to that was actually be in a real war with real stakes and stuff. And and um, and it just opened up this can of amazing. And uh, I think that's kind of what we want to do with this, this next season is let's just tell the stories that we always wanted to tell but just never had a chance with the characters that we didn't spend enough time with. Yeah. Hashtag bring back Cecil. <laughs> I think the hashtag at this point is bring back 479er. You know what? That would be really cool. Yeah. Wouldn't it though? Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's all we're getting out of that. <laughs> Provided that Locus and Felix survive the season, what would you li where would you like to see them go next? Well, I know Disneyland. Felix. <laughs> Sorry. I know Felix the would like to see. Happiest place on earth. <laughs> Can you just imagine? That? <laughs> Locus, Locus with little mouse ears. Holding and a balloon, and Felix just walks up, just. Yeah. This this line is too long. It's unfortunate. <laughs> In which Felix says, "Don't worry. Let's cut it." <laughs> 
I know Felix would love to see himself on a tropical island with some tropical women and a tropical drink. I think that's where he'd like to go. And then he'd go on a tropical killing spree or something because of that bloodlust. Um, yeah, I yeah. think Locust would, you know, he's he's on a path for inner peace at this point. Yeah, I don't know. He's trying to do some soul searching, he's gonna maybe. He's going to walk the world. <laughs> and then he'll get texts from Felix like, babe, where are you? And he's like, yeah. oh, oh my not God. again. Yes, again. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> yeah, I think they'd... Uh, or I don't know. I mean, there is still uh, there is still that suit in Hargrove's office. There is that. Yeah, yeah. I know Locust knows about it now, and what and he Felix certainly knows about it. Too. Very curious about yeah. it. So, Chekhov's armor. Yeah. <laughs> I have one last question, and it's about the book. How long did it take you to assemble that official timeline? Oh, oh, I didn't touch that thing. I was yeah, like, Eddie oh, Reeves what you need a saint. To... Yeah, Eddie did that when Bernie was like, yeah, we're gonna need a timeline. I was like, you have fun with that. Yeah. Zoop. Um, yeah, no, it, it's, it's... And we have to stick to it now, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, book. Um, no, we, 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 particularly Eddie Rivas, have put so much time into this, and, and a lot of hands have touched it, and I think when it comes out, it's going to be really, really cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to putting that in the living room, just having it sit there. It's going to be great. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for having yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for your time. Always super And thanks fun. for your support over the season of both this and uh, Ruby. It's been great. Of course, we love it. Yeah. Take care, everybody.